So I'm recording this at the end of the spring season. It's June now and I wanted to share this little snippet of practice that I've been doing. Um, I sprained my ankle a week and a half ago and uh, so that's meant that <laughs> I've been quite immobile in ways that I'm not used to being. Um, for a long time. It's been a long time since I've sprained my ankle. Um, so this is going to be a seated and lying down prone practice, mostly. This snippet. So I'm starting in a seated wide leg position, finding uh, the outer edges of my legs connected to the ground in a way that allows me to feel a little more steady in my seat. So however that works for you, you might need to kind of shift around and figure out what that position is. And remember, it doesn't matter how wide your legs are. I sneeze. <coughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start with the slides of the hands down the legs to wake up the hips, the spine. So where I am, we're transitioning into the warmer weather. And so remember that this, that transition period can take a while for your body to adjust. So when you practice, it's a good way for you to check in with yourself and how you're feeling in that transition to prep for summer. I'm gonna bring my hands forward and begin to walk the hands out and back in. You're just doing this little crawl forward as another integration moment. And then you can even go off to the sides. I'm going to crawl to one side and back in and crawl to the other side. Maybe out at angles. And then a few moments of some spinal flexion and extension, so cat-cow. And then I'm going to begin a side bend hold. So I'm going to get still with it, slide one hand down the leg, see if you can rest your elbow somewhere and take different moments for your neck. And then I'm going to add the arm floating up and down a few times. And, and then I'm going to hold still with the arm up, a little more activated. Open the chest, noticing the ribs and the side waist. And then pressing up slowly and pausing at center. And then going to the other side. So I'm going to slide down the other leg, find a position for the elbow to rest. And then hold here for a moment. And then find the outer arm floating up and down. And then hold a little more activated. And 
and then coming back up and pause. And take a moment to bring my hands to my ribs and try to more intentionally send the breath in all directions. And just a note here, if it's hard for you to sit in this wide leg position, you can be up against the wall, you can be up against your couch or a chair, you can even be sitting in a chair with your feet wide so you're in kind of like a squat position. It doesn't have to be sitting down on the floor. So there's nothing like an injury that reminds you of different ways that you can get creative to create an accessible moment in your movement practice, in your mindfulness practice, um, to allow comfort and ease for where you're currently at. So just keep that in mind always when you're practicing. I'm going to shift into a half butterfly position. So I'm gonna move one foot in and just angle myself a little bit. And this time, instead of an open like lateral side bend, I'm going to take a forward fold. So I'm gonna reach out and down that extended leg and have my hands on both sides. So you could have blocks here. And maybe first take a few moments of pulse for the spine and notice where you're able to go with it until you're ready to find your position that you wanna hold. Doesn't have to be a long hold, just, just enough. And then we're gonna switch sides. I'm gonna lean back onto the hands and switch the legs. Take a moment to adjust. And then hold. From here, I'm going to take both legs out in front, staff pose. I'm going to sit up tall, arms lift. And then take a few flowing mom moments where I'm going to let the arms sweep back and shoulders round. And then I'm going to drag the fingers forward and come back up to a more active seat. So I'm keeping my heels anchored to the ground, finding this flow. And again, your knees might stay bent a lot more than what I'm showing here. You might not come forward so far. And then this last one, take your hands back behind you, lean back onto your fingertips, drag your heels in to step your feet to the floor. We'll take our windshield wipers, knees rocking side to side. And then I want you to add in your windshield wiper reach positions. So I'm gonna let the knees drop to the right, sweep that left arm around. Whatever you need to do here, I like to do a little pulse down to the ground and then sweep back open. Go to the other side, right arm drags across the air. Usually when I'm teaching this, I like to suggest that this outer arm is like a paintbrush. And you're slowly bringing that color wash across. All 
right. Last thing here, seated. I'm gonna suggest a seated twist. So I'm gonna extend left leg out, step my right foot over left leg, hug the right knee, or cross the elbow over, whichever suits you. Use the ground in every way to figure out your intention for this position. After a moment of hold and embodying it, then finding, I, mean, I call this crab pose, hands back behind you, any way your wrists feel comfortable, press your feet down, lift your hips up. Drop back down. Right leg extends, left foot steps across. Hug your right knee or hook the elbow across. Use the ground and breathe into it. Hands back behind you. Once again, take your crab position and release down. I'm going to now lay down onto my back and bring a block with me for the back of my head. So placing that block under the back of the head just brings a little bit of support and lift for this next position. So we're gonna bend the knees, stack the right thigh over the left, for a reclined shoelace position. So you can reach up with your hands, maybe even lift your head, grab your shins, and let your heels drop out to the side. So it's up to you how much you're gonna hold here so that you feel potentially a nice moment of stretch through the outer thigh into your butt, glutes, outer hips. Okay, so some of you might grab your feet have your feet further away or further down. So lots of different ways to explore. From there, go ahead and open up. You can take your wide leg to straddle from this reclined position and then go to the other side, left, Thigh across, grab your shins or your knees first just to get it set and then decide how you want to hold. Then release again if you want to take your wide leg straddle or any other shake out. Then I'm going to remove the block from behind the head. Extend the legs out from the pelvis. Inch my hips over to the left side of my mat, keeping your butt down. Walk your legs over to the right side. So you're in this curved lateral side stretch now. And then your arms as well, your shoulders, if, you can, if you're able to shift even more through your upper body to the right, then you're in banana pose, AKA crescent pose. And just rest here using the floor, trying to keep both shoulder blades down, both sides of your seat down. You could always find one spot at the ceiling to look at, or you could close your eyes.
Now, this is normally a position I like to hold for at least a minute on each side. But for time purposes, I'm going to start the process of releasing. You're welcome to stay longer. I'm going to take that outer leg and bend that one first so I can press the foot down into the mat and use that to help shift the hips back to center, bringing everything back to the middle. From here, I'm going to take a gentle bridge. I'm going to keep the elbows down, press the elbows down into the ground and lift the hips up from here. Just a moment to reset, lower back down, move the hips to the right, extend the legs down and angle them to the left. The same with the arms and upper body angle them to the left and hold. So again, if you want to hold it longer, feel free. I'm going to take my outer leg, step it to the mat, begin to shift back to center. Take a very gentle bridge and lower down. All right, now I'm going to flip over to my stomach for some prone positions. I'm going to start with some locust pulses. So once you feel that you're um, comfortable on your stomach, arms can come back behind you, press your hips down into the mat, and begin with your chest lift. And if that starts to feel like you're pretty steady and okay, then maybe lift the legs as well. And then I'm going to lift the arms as well. And whenever you're feeling like you want to hold, gather yourself against the, the ground and then full activation here. I'm going to swim those arms around to the front, settle my forehead to the stacked hands and rest. With your head down while you're resting, you can bend your knees and let your legs sway. Explore any movement here. And gently lift your head, prop yourself up onto your elbows for sphinx. So you can have the elbows 
close to under the shoulders. Anchor down, lift the chest, move your head around. Maybe bend the knees, press the thighs down into the floor. This is a pose for this moment that I'm thinking of. Connecting the shoulders, the hands, the breath to the upper legs and the lower back. And then release. So now from here, I'm going to come up into melting heart pose. So I'm going to use the knees to come up through table, move around in your table a little bit, swaying. My knees are going to be a little bit wider than my hips as I then keep the hips moving up and back like they would be for downward facing dog and then reaching the arms out any way that you like. I like to find my finger pads, lift the wrists up, really stretch it out. Again, feeling that line of energy and attention from the hands to the heart, to the breath, to the low back. enough of that walk your hands in I'm going to take a moment in downward dog so I can't put all my weight on my right ankle but I can still attempt somewhat of a stretch I'm rehabbing it so <laughs> again another way for you to be reminded that we all have these things that happen in our current lives and our bodies and we can adjust our practice accordingly. I'm gonna step now my right foot forward as much as you're able for a moment of lunar lunge sequence. So I'm just gonna take a moment to rock a little bit. And then spend a moment in your half split position. I'm gonna rock back be on the, the right heel for a moment, fold forward. Good, and then slowly coming forward, lifting up. Fingertips touch overhead. If you're feeling strong in it, you want to lift up onto the back toes to come high up into your high crescent lunge. That's an option. And then lastly, rocking back one more time for another half split or even a half saddle. And then releasing. I'm going to come to the other side. In between, take a moment of integration and then stepping that left foot forward. I'm going to hold in a half split for a moment. Now on my left heel. Then come forward and rise up into your high lunge, low lunge. Extension of the spine. One more half split variation. And then release. Now just checking in with how you want to rest, meditative rest. You can be back on your stomach prone. You can come to your back. I've been really craving some um, 
spine opening here. More extension. So I'm going to set up my blocks, one tall and one medium level. So the first block at medium level hits the mid back, the thoracic spine. The second block hits the back of the head, and then you can rest here. So then I'm going to take my feet wide, let the knees cave in. And another thing I've been doing a lot because of my ankle is legs up elevated. So if you're near a couch or a chair, you could put your legs up on something. The wall's good too, but if you have something that if your legs are really tired or you need to elevate, then I do suggest the couch or a chair or a bed because then you can let your lower legs fully relax and release into it. Whereas the, um, the wall might not be quite as restful in that case. Wherever you're resting, I'm gonna get quiet now for a couple minutes. Don't hesitate to reposition any part of your body when you're in your resting position. Just imagine you all out there, if you turn this on, I'm thinking of you all wherever you are, continuing to sit with and reflect the collective, what we're all holding and going through, and how we can continue to learn together how to grow and speak up and love and take care of ourselves and each other. I know it's a lot and it continues to be a lot. It's been over two years now of it being a lot So, however you're choosing to show up, remember to have compassion for yourself. I'm right there with you, working on it. Um, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in July. I'll be recording another session in July, hopefully with more mobile ankle <laughs> that time. Um, but take good care, and happy solstice coming up. Okay.